Hello students, uh, welcome back to the next part of our another chapter that is the neural control and coordination. So in this neural control and coordination, the second part we will discuss is the conduction of nerve impulse. So let's just start the video with the conduction of nerve impulse. Okay. So first of all, you need to know the difference between the two words. One is conduction, another is the uh, transmission. So what is conduction and what is transmission? See, the neurons which will take the impulse to the central nervous system. Obviously not by one. So number of neurons, millions of neurons will be present in a nerve fiber which is taking the impulse from the receptor organ to the central nervous system or from the central nervous system to the effector organ. So what is it? If the impulse is moving within the neuron, then it will be called as conduction. Okay, but if the propagation of nerve impulse is occurring from one neuron to the next neuron by the presence of some uh, neurotransmitters, that will be called as the transmission. Okay, so remember these two words. So we have two mechanisms. One is the conduction of nerve impulse and second one is the transmission of nerve impulse. So first of all, we'll see the conduction of nerve impulse. That means within the neuron, how the transmission occurs. And then after completing the conduction of nerve impulse, we'll see transmission. In the transmission, we'll see from one axon of a neuron, transmit this impulse to the dendrite of the next neuron. So that's how the transmission of nerve impulse occurs. So let's just start the conduction of nerve impulse. This means the nerve impulse is trans, uh, moving, propagating within the same neuron. So what is this conduction? First of all, if it comes to the neuron, we'll see, draw one exon here. So this is the exon right so this exon will have exolemma in it okay now this exon is going to have the channels then different type of channels are present different types of actually pumps are there okay so that we can have trans conduction of nerve impulse so whenever we are in the state of resting this is called as resting membrane potential and this resting membrane potential is a uh, potential is also called as the state of RMP resting membrane potential is also called as a state of polarization so in the state of polarization what happens right so first of all just see whenever we are in the resting membrane potential we have a potential difference of minus 70 millivolt okay we have the potential difference of minus 70 millivolt inside the neuron so the liquid is present inside the neuron is called as icf icf remember that is intracellular fluid that is the cytoplasm that is neuroplasm here if it is an exon inside the exon we will have icf now our outside this will be called as ecf or extracellular fluid now just remember one thing that the intracellular fluid and extracellular fluid will have different type of ions in it okay yes the different ions that will carry the charges positive and negative charges see in the ecf we have higher concentration of sodium ion and less concentration of potassium ion both of them they are positively charged and icf which have higher concentration of potassium ion and less concentration of sodium ion this thing is very much important this is the first point you need to know the second point you need to know that in case of the neurilemma this is the neurilemma so this neurilemma is permeable to remember neurilemma is permeable to permeable to only the positive charge okay not the negative charge 
only the positive charge can enter or exit it can enter or exit but no negative charge if inside or outside negative charge is developed means negative charge is more in the icf and positive charge is less that's how we will develop negative charge and if you're developing positive charge if you're developing positive charge that means the amount of positive charge is more than that of the negative charge so that's why you're developing pos um, negative charge so what is it neurilemma is allowing only the positive charge to enter or exit not the negative charge okay now the third thing you need to know that if it comes to the neurilemma it is going to have two types of gates how many types of gates we have two types of gates what are they one is the channel and the next one is called as a uh, one pump that is sodium potassium pump okay there is a pump present which is called as sodium potassium pump and there are two channels present what are the channels one is called as the leaky channel and the next one is called as a voltage gated channel okay so we are going to have two type of channels leaky channels and voltage gated channels yeah, leaky channels will be for sodium ion and for the potassium ion and for voltage gate also we are going to have the uh, voltage gate uh, channels for positive sodium ion and the potassium ion and this pump is the sodium potassium pump one thing remember that if it comes to the channels the channels will work along concentration gradient along concentration gradient means the ions will move from the region of higher concentration to the lower concentration without the expense of any ATP or energy. But if it comes to the pump, sodium potassium pump, it is working in the expense of ATP, right? So remember this thing that if it is sodium potassium pump, it is working whenever energy will be utilized. So here ATP is required. So this will be for the energy ATP is required and for ch channels there will be no ATP utilized so that's why it will be the pump which is active transport and if it is for channel it is the passive transport so we have the diffusion of the ions from the la la from the region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration right so let's just see up to this if you can understand then you will easily understand how this negative charge and positive charge that means the resting membrane potential and action membrane potential will be generated so these three points you need to know what are the three points first thing the liquid present inside the neuron is icf that is the neuroplasm icf ha have higher concentration of potassium ion and less concentration of sodium ion Outside the neuron, the liquid present is called as ECF, which have higher concentration of sodium ion and less concentration of potassium ion. Second point you need to know that in case of neurilemma, neurilemma is permeable to only the positive charge, not the negative charge. Third point, what you need to know that for the movements of ions, what I said, the neurilemma is permeable to the positive charges, how the positive charges will move, enter or exit by the different types of gates. How many types of gates here? We have two types of gates and one is channel and another is pump. There are two types of channels present. One is leaky channel uh, and another is the voltage gated channel. And the second one is the pump, which is the sodium potassium pump. So these three points you need to know. After that, let's just move how we are developing resting membrane potential. And after that, we will see how the action membrane potential or AMP will be generated. Okay, so first thing, we'll see the resting membrane potential. So whenever we are in the resting state, that means you are closing your eyes, you're not seeing anything, you are not able to smell anything. Suppose you're not doing anything, then the neuron will be in the state of resting membrane potential. So what is happening in the resting membrane potential? See, <coughs> here, what I said, there are, there are some leaky channels, one for the sodium, another for the potassium. 
and some voltage gated channel that will be sodium and for the potassium and there is a pump present okay so whenever we are in the state of resting membrane potential or we are in the state of polarization then the potential difference of minus 70 millivolt will be developed inside the neuron and plus positive charge will be developed outside okay so how this can be possible so see one thing we need to know that this is the icf this is ecf okay the channels are working along concentration gradient right so what will happen that what will happen that see these are the leaky channels suppose these are the these are the leaky channels and these are the voltage gated channels okay so this is for the sodium ion this is for the potassium ion and this is for sodium ion this is for potassium ion but sodium ion and potassium ion if it is voltage gated channel then it is closed so first thing that the leaky channels in the icf what is present in higher concentration we have potassium ion so this potassium ion will move outside isn't that so potassium ion leaky channel will go allow the efflux of potassium ion and what will happen to the sodium ion channel the sodium ion uh, channel that will work that when the sodium ion channels are leaky channels are opening the sodium ion will enter okay sodium ion will constantly enter and potassium ion will constantly uh, go outside so this will happen constantly leaky channels will work irrespective of I, uh, resting membrane potential or action membrane potential so at one period of time what will happen if this leaky channels are open all the time at one period of time it will come to an equilibrium and you know that the living state is a state of non-equilibrium that means if equilibrium occurs that means there will be no conduction okay that no conduction means this thing will nervous system the conduction that will be all crashed so our all living system will work so that we can attain a state of non-equilibrium okay so what will happen to maintain that okay what can happen that the sodium potassium pump is working so whenever the sodium potassium pump will work what will happen it will efflux three sodium ion outside and influx to potassium ion inside okay so this is what happens whenever sodium potassium pump is working so two potassium ion will enter inside and three three sodium ion will remove outside and two potassium ion will enter inside okay so that's why what will happen here due to this efflux the potassium ion channel here it is closed first of all it is closed then after that at one period of time high level of potassium ion as we are developing negative uh, charge inside then what will happen yes sodium ion is removing outside but potassium ion is entering right so at one period of time this voltage gated channel will open and this will efflux more potassium ion outside so that's how what will happen the sodium ion is moving outside and potassium ion is also moving outside so there will be high positive ion develop or accumulate in the ecf and less uh, charge that means less uh, uh, at one period of time whenever we are in the resting membrane potassium less positive charge will be there in the icf right so that's why what will happen we will develop negative charge inside okay so while we are developing negative charge forget about this leaky channels leaky channels will work at any time so what will happen sodium potassium pump is working it will cause efflux of sodium ion three sodium ion at once and influx of two potassium ion inside and the potassium ion channel voltage gated channels are open so that the potassium ion can be effluxed okay so this is what happens whenever we are in the state of rmp or the resting membrane potential after that let's just see what is i will write here what is happening that this state of polarization in the state of polarization what happens the sodium potassium pump what will happen to the sodium potassium pump it is activated okay it is active activated 
what will happen to the sodium ion we are talking about only the voltage gates okay sodium ion channel this will be channel that will be closed and what will happen to the potassium ion channel it will be opened okay so this is what happened in the resting membrane potential after that let us see the next one that is the action membrane potential so what is happening in the action membrane potential so in the action membrane potential we will uh, call it also the state of amp A amp stands for action membrane potential where we are developing the this is also called as a depolarized state and in the depolarized state we will develop a charge of plus 30 millivolt inside the neuron so this is suppose the neuron one second in the icf what is now happening see this is this is the sodium uh, ion channel potassium forget about the leaky channel leaky channels will work at any time so this is the sodium potassium pump readily the sodium potassium pump will be deactivated suddenly the sodium potassium uh, pump will be deactivated and already what is happening this sodium ion leaky channels are already working yeah this one is also working potassium ion leaky channel is also working but sodium ion whenever it is entering 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 in one period of time the sodium ion is not effluxed then the uh, sodium ion concentration will be increased in the icf so this will cause the opening of the sodium ion voltage gates voltage gate at one period of time will be open and once it is opened what will happen what will happen all of the sodium ion will rush into this rush into it okay so sodium ion will rush into the icf and in this period of time the potassium ion voltage gates will be closed also okay so what is it this is the state of action membrane potential so what will happen here the efflux of potassium ion will be decreased the if influx of sodium ion will be increased why because sodium potassium pump is deactivated remember here i will write once again what will happen to the sodium ion uh, sodium potassium pump this will be deactivated okay what will happen to the sodium ion channel this will be open and what will happen to the potassium ion voltage gate channel that will be closed okay so what is it this will be called as the action membrane potential so whenever the action membrane potential is generated that means we are in the state of depolarization means suddenly you see something you hear something you're touched you can sense the temperature or pressure suddenly sodium potassium pump deactivates so due to the flow of sodium ion through this leaky channel at one period of time that uh, concentration of sodium ion will be increased so whenever the sodium ion starts to increase over and over again then what will happen at one period of time voltage gate channels will be open and that's how all the sodium ion will be rushed inside this icf and at that period of time potassium ion channel voltage gate channel will be closed okay so that is what happens in the action membrane potential so after that let us see this conduction of nerve impulse how this conduction of nerve impulse will occur that means it will be from one region to the next region isn't that so let's just see now we have discussed only the state of rmp and amp but we have not discussed till now the conduction of nerve impulse okay so let's just see this one this is the conduction of nerve impulse now so what will happen in the conduction of nerve impulse see this is suppose the nerve okay this is suppose one neuron this is the side a this is side b this is side c side a side b side c so this is the state of polarization okay so this is the state of polarization okay i will write here four okay side a side b c and d this is a this is b this is c this is this is d 
okay so first of all this is the state of polarization this is the state of polarization this is the state of depolarization then after that this will be the state of repolarization then after that we are moving to a state called as hyperpolarization okay so after that state hyperpolarization what happens okay so first of all whenever we are in the state of rmp resting membrane potential what will happen sodium potassium pump is activated so sodium ion will be moving outside and potassium ion will be moving inside forget about this uh, leaky channels leaky channels will be open in every period of time what will happen to the sodium ion channel voltage gates it will be closed what will happen to this potassium ion channel it will be opened it will be opened okay so that's why potassium ion will be moving outside next one the state of depolarization at that period of time sodium potassium pump is deactivated so then after that sodium ion channel will be open cause the entry of sodium ion inside and what will happen to this potassium ion voltage gate channel it will be closed okay what will happen in the state of repolarization one second that it will come back to the state of polarization one second so after the depolarization the neuron will come to the state of polarization one second so that will be called as the state of repolarization so in this state what will happen that this sodium uh, potassium pump will be one second working this sodium ion voltage gate channels will be closed one second and potassium ion uh, channel the voltage gate channel will be opened it will open 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 and at one period of time what will happen it will okay one second i will show here what are the charges here first of all it will be the charge of minus 70 millivolt whenever we develop the state of depolarization we will develop the plus 30 millivolt then after that at the state of repolarization one second we will have the minus 70 millivolt but here one thing will happen even after this repolarization sta stage what will happen this potassium ion channel will be open and it will cause the efflux of more potassium ion to outside so whenever this potassium ion voltage gate channels are open for a long period of time it will cause the efflux of more potassium ion outside that will develop more negative ion inside negative charge outside so that will cause the state of hyperpolarization that means this is the state of minus 90 millivolt but one second whenever hyperpolarization state is been attained the at one period of time gradually this potassium ion voltage gate channel will start to get closure okay so it will come back to the hyper from the hyperpolarization state to the polarization state one second so after hyperpolarization state it will come to this the state of polarization one second okay so this is how the a whole conduction of nerve impulse occurs so in the state of uh, polarization we have minus negative charge inside and positive charge outside at the state of depolarization will develop positive charge inside outside negative charge then at the state of repolarization yes we will develop negative charge and outside positive charge but due to the constant opening of this potassium ion channel for a long period of time cause a flux of more potassium ion and once this hyperpolarization state occurs it will come back to the state of polarization so in one period of time this potassium ion uh, channel voltage gate channel will be closed and only the leaky channel sodium ion channel and potassium ion channel will be opening okay so that's how this whole state of uh, conduction of nerve impulse will occur so once i will show these things in the uh, in one graph okay so let's just see how this graph depicts first thing 
suppose this is the state of okay this is okay so this is 0 this is minus 70 this is minus 90 and this is plus 30 okay this is plus 30 all we are in millivolt whenever we are in the resting membrane potential then we will have the state of uh, rmp minus 70 millivolt then whenever we'll get a threshold threshold means whenever we'll get the sufficient stimulus then this is the state of the state of uh, threshold or the stimulus is enough to create a spike potential that means it can reach the state of plus 30 that will be called as the threshold stimulus so the stimulus is created so whenever the stimulus is created from this point what will happen this is the stimulus suppose this is threshold stimulus minus 65 okay minus 65 to minus 60 millivolt in this time period what happens the state of rmp this is the polarized neuron so it will move to the spike potential that means it will not stop in between so whenever this threshold stimulus of minus 65 millivolt is attained then readily this neuron will move from this state of minus 7 65 millivolt to plus 30 millivolt it will not stop in between that is plus 20 or plus 10 no it will reach to the plus 30 millivolt and it will get the state of amp it will cause the uh, depolarization of the neuron then after that once again it will after transmitting uh, uh, sorry after conducting the nerve impulse after that it will be stopped how it will be stopped it will go down it will go down to the state of polarization so this will be the state of repolarization but what happened due to the constant opening of this potassium ion voltage gate channel it will move to the state of hyperpolarization so whenever it is reaching to the hyperpolarization step then what will happen at one period of time voltage gates potassium ion channel will be closed and only the leaky channels will be open so that's why it will move to the state of repolarization okay so this is how this whole graph shows first of all in the state of rmp the sodium potassium pump is activated and sodium ion channel is closed potassium ion channel is closed okay so at one period of time what will happen whenever it gets the stimulus that means the uh, impulse has been generated so the sodium potassium pump will be de deactivated sodium ion channel will be open potassium ion channel will be still closed and whenever they are in the state of amp this is what happens sodium potassium pump is deactivated sodium ion channel is open potassium channel is closed so at this period of time this is moving to the state of hyperpolarization so in the hyperpolarization state what is happening right from this stage itself this hype uh, this state that means it will start to work okay so in this period of time this is the okay so in this period of time this sodium potassium pump will start to work sodium ion channel will be closed this potassium ion channel will be still open so that's why it will reach the state of hyperpolarization but whenever it is reaching to the hyperpolarization that is minus 90 millivolt once again it will come back to the state of repolarization so whenever it is reaching to the state of repolarization one second this sodium potassium pump will be working once again the sodium ion channel will be closed the potassium ion channel will be closed so this is the state of repolarization so this is how the whole uh, chart this whole graph will shows so this is all about the conduction of nerve impulse in the next video we will see the uh, transmission of nerve impulse so that's all up to this video i hope you understand thank you